I'm Jeff Gahan, Mayor of New Albany, Indiana. As the city celebrates its 200th year, we hope to capture the living memory of New Albany by providing a window into the lives of residents who grew up, worked, and raised families here. Let's hear from the city's residents who've experienced New Albany's recent growth into the great city that it is today, a city that I am proud to call home. The city of New Albany wakes up slowly as the sun rises over the Ohio River. Its downtown historic district stirs with early risers on their way to work. New Albany's rolling hills and scenic landscapes surround them on the drive. I do have a um, soft spot in my heart for New Albany. It's been a good place for 54 years for me and my wife to raise our children. There was never any alternative in my mind for me but to live here. I was rooted here and I think it kind of goes back to my love of ancestry and my love of the study of my family's past because they had been so much a part of this place I saw no reason for me to leave it and, and I just bloomed where I was planted if you will. It's been a great place to live. I mean uh, I've acquired lifelong friends and uh, I, I have no regrets. I love what I do and continue to love it and uh, I hope I can stay here till the end. Well, New Albany to me is, has always been home, of course. And I like it because I think uh, they've accepted me and my jab. It was a perfect town to grow up in. It wasn't too big, but it was big enough. It had everything. It's changed, but I think it's still great people. I think there's still enough people who are interested in keeping it a, a nice place to live. I think a river town has charm that other towns don't have. You know, I've lived here all my life and, and I have no desire to move anywhere else. Uh, I can go out of town, uh, we went out this weekend down to Lake Cumberland and moving back in and I was glad to get back into New Albany. The thing I'm most proud of in New Albany is the spirit of the people and uh, the friendliness and uh, upbeat nature of the people. You know, we're trying to keep the business going for the people out here. You know, I'm not interested in trying to sell it to anybody else. I kind of think of us as a family. And, you know, I, I do everything I can to help them. And they realize that and they appreciate that. Many lifelong residents who enjoyed playing, learning, and growing up in New Albany raised their own families here to pass on their childhood experiences of New Albany to the next generation We've had a great life together, we really have. We've been blessed in so many ways with uh, having a lovely family and uh, living here in this community and having the ability to travel and go different places and expose ourselves as well as our children to other places and, and then come back home. New Albany has been and is and I'm sure always will be a great place to raise a family and live. We have the convenience of living in a major metropolitan area with all of the advantages of living in a small town, but the arts, culture, the opportunity for higher education are here as well as in Louisville, Kentucky. People here, I think, obviously have Midwestern to Southern tendencies, are hospitable, and are just friendly people and we have a wonderful school system, both public uh, and private, so we have many advantages. New Albany is a good place to, to raise a family today because just as in the past, it was a small town community where people knew your name, where you felt comfortable, but, but in the past you had to go somewhere else to, to get all the amenities that you needed. Today it's all available right here in the city. I'm fascinated to see what, what's going to happen over the next 10 years because the development potential is tremendous. We have good health care in this area. I think that's important to a family. The uh, medical society and the hospital is uh, top notch. We have uh, the employment uh, possibly. We have uh, industry. We have a lot of service uh, organizations. And uh, with, uh, with that, I think it, it provides a nice place to raise a family. The, of course, the, uh, the local government uh, with the police force and the fire department that we have, very protective. 
I think that's gone a long way toward making it a safe place to live. I think people will live here because they enjoy living here, and it's just a nice place to live. New Albany's longtime residents reflect fondly on childhood memories of the city. They share the imprint the city has left on them, reminisce on old times, and reflect on the sense of wonder surrounding New Albany. I've been in New Albany my entire life, basically, in the same one block area. A little unusual, I guess. It was just like one big happy family. You knew everybody. The thing I remember, Mother would, uh, you know, you did washing and ironing back then. People didn't have dryers or anything else. And when I was growing up, she always had a basket full of ironing to do. And she would tell me stories of growing up in New Albany. My memory, uh... That, that links me tightly to New Albany is the fact that I was born and raised on Eakin Avenue between Vincennes Street and Thomas. And it was a bit of a hill up to Thomas. And as a child, I was always intrigued by the streetcar that would come up, clang, 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 up the hill, get up to Indiana Avenue, turn around, come back down, all the way. And I used to take that streetcar to, to St. Mary's School when I first started in school at age six, because I lived there until age nine. My grandfather, Clem, who died in 1961, always says, I lived a great long life. I saw the streetcar come and go in the city of New Albany. New Albany has experienced challenges from the great flood of 1937 to fires and economic hard times. These challenges proved only to strengthen the resolve of this community to rebuild and grow. The flood was uh, something that uh, none of us who were here at that time will ever forget. The year after the flood, I would have been four years old, and her father took her down there with me to show him where their house had been. And all that was there was a sea of dandelions, mud, grass, and dandelions. That's all, all that was left. Day Lumber Company was, was the lifeblood of, of my little family. Dad was ready to retire, and 12 and a half hours before the papers were to be signed for the sale of the company, the building burned to the ground. New Albany's downtown was thriving when I was um, in elementary school and high school. And then, of course, things declined. And now, here 50 years later, they're on a significant uptick with all of the new retail shops, restaurants, uh, microbrewery, winery, all here in downtown New Albany. It's beautiful to see the city crowded on weeknights and weekends. What it shows is a city like New Albany can have good times, uh, bad times, but can reinvent itself and can grow and flourish again. And uh, uh, my hope is that anyone who might view this 100 years from now will have the great pride in, in New Albany that I do. As a city on the border between the North and South, New Albany was ripe for social change during segregation. Many New Albany residents championed equality long before other parts of the country. At our age, we can say we've lived through a lot. It doesn't seem like when we think about our age, I don't think about us as having experienced so much history, but uh, a magnitude from the time I say as children in Jerry coming to this segregated school and me going to a segregated school and, and then us being able to experience that transition from that to integration and making wonderful friends. I guess everyone began to see that it could work if everyone put their minds to it. So um, I think New Albany was just one of those places where once it had to be done, it was done, you know. The initial phase was certainly the integration of the schools. Uh, you know, uh, New Albany really had a unique history. Actually, when New Albany started as schools, it was integrated. And the state legislature said, you can't do that. You have to have separate but equal. And, uh, you know, that's just kind of an interesting transition that occurred. So we were really kind of fortunate in this area 
because we did not have some of the issues you had in the Deep South that was extremely violent. And uh, you don't have to be violent to make a change. New Albany served as a gateway to freedom for slaves in the South with stations on the Underground Railroad, like Town Clock Church. Today, New Albany residents commemorate the history of the city by preserving these locations. That church served as a refuge for slaves, but it is now we're being able to participate in the Friends of the Town Clock Church, try to help maintain it, and also to expand it beyond just being a church as a congregational church, but really make it a historical monument and uh, make it a place of study down there, just as Division Street Schools become a, uh, not only a museum, but also a, an educational facility, working live educational facility. All of these things, that's what Jerry was saying. We, we feel, uh, I guess we feel so ingrained and so in love with New Albany because we have invested a part of ourselves in it. And uh, so we feel like, I think it's like anything. If you put some of yourself, your time and energy and your talents into it, you take ownership of it. So we feel like uh, we have some ownership in New Albany and it's, uh, it's a very important part of our lives. Today's New Albany is experiencing a renaissance of educational opportunities, the arts, entertainment, and business growth. New Albany residents enjoy four-star schools, scenic parks, a thriving downtown district, and public art projects. The more the, the little town diversifies and offers new reasons for people to be, be coming to town, then it becomes a destination place. It's a wonderful little town right along the river uh, perfectly set for, uh, for growth and, and development. It's just unbelievable how much New Albany has grown. Uh, I've watched so many things change. You know, the IUS building start up, the uh, community park, the digging of the lake of the community park, the change on the riverfront. You know, at one time you didn't take your family across the flood wall. You know, it just wasn't safe. But now it's grown into where we enjoy the riverfront, which is part of New Albany. The downtown area, when I was young, it was striving, you know, busy every Friday and Saturday night. And uh, when all the shopping centers and all came in, you seen a lot move out of the downtown area. And uh, the mayors that I've served under worked very hard to turn that around. And I went down just last week through the city of New Albany and it was unbelievable. You couldn't find a f parking spot and uh, a lot of uh, different restaurants have moved in. The city has worked hard to uh, keep New Albany like it was. Probably the biggest thing for the city of New Albany was the building of IUS. You know, that started out with a dream out there and, and uh, they were going to do this and do that. And I thought, yeah, but it has worked. They've got housing and everything right in the city of New Albany. You don't have to go away to college. You can get full degree right there at your back door. And I think IUS has uh, uh, been wonderful for the city of New Albany. You just have to create the opportunity for people who want to invest in New Albany. And I think this goes through a long line of mayors and council people and people in city government and forward thinkers who have just done their best to make New Albany financially responsible, make New Albany clean, make it inviting. And I think over, you know, Republicans, Democrats, all that, it doesn't matter. Over a period of time, that's happened. And we're seeing the fruits of all that today. I think a good leader looks to the future rather than the present time. Uh, the next generation maybe even. And uh, so many people don't want to look past today, but it takes some uh, ingenuity and uh, forward thinking to provide good leadership. I think the f that the future of New Albany over the next 50 to 100 years is very bright. And the reason I say that is we have people who, with an entrepreneurial spirit who are reviving our downtown. I'm convinced New Albany will continue to be successful. It may evolve, but New Albany has such a rich history within the state of Indiana, 
and it was important in the early development of Indiana. And if we build on that, then the future is bright for our city. In 1991, we started out in a 5,000 square foot bay in an industrial building that we were renting. And from there, uh, we just kept expanding, expanding, and now we're operating in almost 100,000 square feet 22 years later. In American Craft Brewing circa 2013, we take quite a lot of different influences and make it into something that is singular, something that is unique in an American creative fashion. One of our major responsibilities is to adapt to a world that changes, but to always think locally. In the beer business, we have this axiom, which is you think globally, drink locally. The city has changed immensely, yet longtime residents believe New Albany has kept its charm. Well, it is familiar, and it is home. And when I say home, that means I can go down 8th Street and look over at the house my father grew up in. I feel comfortable knowing the history. I feel comfortable knowing the history. That makes it my home. You went shopping over there, and you wanted to go out to dinner, you went over there, and now you, don't, you do that here, you know, with the malls and all. From repurposed storefronts to city projects like Bicentennial Park, New Albany residents embrace the strong foundation laid by our forefathers. There are many reasons now to come to the city. Whether you've come to eat or whether you've come to, to buy something or whether you've come to, to enjoy entertainment in the park, it gives the, the, the whole town a, a feeling that, that everybody's welcome. It's a joy today in this decade to see the old buildings of New Albany be, being retrofitted and repurposed, if you will, with new kinds of products, new kinds of commerce, bringing today's people in today's culture into the city. I'm thrilled with what has happened to New Albany in the last five years because, again, my ancestry was very involved in many of those buildings downtown. They built the River City Winery. What a joy it was to see the River City Winery building so beautifully restored over a two-year period. They built the Schmidt Furniture Building. Isn't it wonderful that that Schmidt Furniture Building is still in business and still alive and well? Uh, there has been a lot of work done to uh, savor the old buildings in town, those that are worth saving, those that have some history. Uh, and you look at some of the uh, mansions on Main Street that have been refurbished and one or two even taken by the state to develop. That uh, gives uh, a lot of history to people that would never know about the, the community if, if that wasn't done. And now we have uh, people with an entrepreneurial spirit who are seeing and using downtown as the focus of their business because they see the potential of a thriving downtown. And I think the city has done wonderful things by being a partner in the construction of the YMCA, the reuse of what was our beautiful post office and federal building that was torn down in the early 70s now for the Bicentennial Park. As we celebrate our bicentennial, it's been a very successful celebration, I believe, with, especially with our new park and other things going on. I think it behooves future leaders to carry on the spirit and the stewardship that uh, the past leaders have had over the years. Residents of New Albany have invested their time, money, and energy to build New Albany, a place unlike any other. With all the amenities of a big city, and the benefits of a small town. I've never hesitated to say I'm from New Albany, Indiana. When I travel nowadays and they ask me where I'm from, I say New Albany, Indiana. But years ago I would say, uh, well, I'm in a little town across the Ohio River from Louisville, Kentucky, and may not say New Albany, Indiana. But nowadays I do. We're getting people to take a look at New Albany. We have made New Albany a destination for a lot of people. People are coming over here for activities. I feel that the opportunities now in New Albany are more exciting than they were when I started. And there is something to be said for wisdom and experience and age. It's 200 years old. Drop in the bucket compared to ancient Rome, but uh, you know, it's not a bad lick when it comes to the United States. And what it means to me is there's always something to be learned from all that experience. Lifelong residents remember the people, the community who raised them, 
the places they love, the experiences they had in New Albany. The city leaves a mark on those who live here, and those who live here become a part of the history of New Albany. The future of New Albany, I think, will continue to build on the strength of its past, and the strength of its past was it was a small town community. We're in a different world today, there's no doubt about it. I mean, the computer world has, has changed everything, right? So, so we, are, we, we live by that technology, but you know, we're still gonna be re rooted in, in little places like New Albany. We're gonna be rooted in family that makes the community what it is. We're gonna be rooted in our faith and our belief, in our churches, in our schools, in the small town community that, that, that New Albany will consistently be. It's always gonna be necessary for it to evolve and go with the flow, but we as humans are just still rooted in in family and, and, and that in our humanness. As the sun sets over New Albany, shoppers purchase their final items. Commuters make their serene drive home and residents return to their families. Under the stars, New Albany slows, prepares for another day, and quietly tucks itself to sleep. <laughs>